So welcome to Vonvo, guys. Thank you for joining us. Just really quickly, I just want to let you guys know that I am recording and your video will be posted to YouTube after the conclusion of this conversation. Is that fine with the both of you? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. And another rule, let's just try and please be respectful and not speak over one another so we can have the best conversation that we can have. So to start, why don't we just uh, briefly explain who we are so and how we kind of got involved in the Israeli and Palestinian conflict. So Mo, if you want to start. Um, my name is Mo Diab. I'm a Palestinian American. I live in San Diego, California. And um, pretty much I've always been interested in the conflict. Um, my family lives in East Jerusalem. I visited several times. I've witnessed the, the apartheid wall put up. I've witnessed, I mean, the military occupation. And I kind of wanted to further educate myself in get the perspective from both sides prior to really taking a, a really strong standpoint. Right. So, I mean, I've been a human rights activist for a few years now. I'm a writer, I do poetry, write articles, and I'm also a graduate student. Right, great. Okay, and how about you, Noam? Uh, I'm just uh, living in Israel. So, the issues is very touching, affecting all the Right. Yeah. And you you've been in Israel your whole life, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, great. So thank you for that. Now I know Mo requested that we speak about more of Israel and its status as an apartheid state. And Noam, you've requested to Max that we speak about some of the negative ideologies and actions of the Palestinians. Is that correct? No, I just said I didn't suggest anything. Oh, anything. Okay. So, great. Did you want to go over anything to do with Hamas? As far no, as... Uh, what, I said, what I said to Max is that most of the topics, I think more than 90% of the topics that bring up in Bongo is a quick sign Israel. And I think it should be balanced if uh, we should bring more topics that criticize also the other side as well. That's it. Right. Okay. okay so you, you no, I didn't feel... speak about negativity or something like this. That's no, I agree. I mean, if you want to look at it from both ends, I have no problem with that at all. Um, yeah. As far as, I mean, the Palestinian side has been criticized for having um, Hamas as the pretty much the representative for the Palestinians in Gaza. Um, so, I mean, we can start on that topic there. If, if that's something you want to start on, then we can go into something more um, neutral for both sides and then go into uh, the apartheid uh, question of Israel. Does that sound good, Noam? Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't say from the <laughs> no to the, to the issue about the apartheid. It's just... Uh, you, you said something I said to Max. I wanted to correct you. you yeah. Said, okay. No, that's that's more that's more than fine. That's more than fine. I'm here to talk about what you guys want to talk about. So, all right. So why don't we start start with that? So, you want. so why don't we start with that? Noam, uh, as living in Israel, what are your general feelings towards Hamas and what they're all about, and how do you perceive them? Well, I, I think that uh, it shows when uh, Hamas was chosen by democracy in Gaza Strip after Israel uh, withdrew from uh, Gaza Strip. Uh, Hamas was chosen by the people, the leaders, and it showed that uh, the people in Gaza rather want peace. It shows a terrible organization that his main goal is to destroy Israel and what uh, it represents as a uh, leadership. So it says a lot of, of the Palestinians and people here. And I said for it. Okay. And Mo, what are your general feelings? Um, I think it's important to look at the the origin of the stigma or the stereotype associated with Hamas and uh, democratically elected in Gaza. First of all, um, they were highly criticized and called a terrorist organization, just like Fatah was called a terrorist organization. Fatah became very, very corrupt, and in 2006, the United States and Israel suggested a democratic election knowing that they could arm Fatah with millions of dollars in weapons to stronghold the election. 
regardless of them doing that, that's a uh, lost election. Hamas had an overwhelming majority of the vote, and they were elected. After that, there was a civil war between Fatah and Hamas, and Fatah was armed with superior weapons and um, um, a great uh, financial means as far as um, having more and more uh, uh, police officers and representatives to fight for uh, Fatah against Hamas. So what happened was, somehow, um, due to strategy or whatnot, Hamas came out on top and took over the West Bank. And, um, sorry, took over on Gaza. And the outcome of this was that they were highly criticized. You now have this ex these extremists, um, so-called by the West, that are now um, governing Gaza. And in governing Gaza, the most important thing to look at is, are they... Are they serving the people? Fatah was not allocating the funds in the proper places. Gaza provides infrastructure, they've built hospitals, they've built schools, and they're most focused on education and protecting the civilians. Now you have to look at where the extremism comes from. Yeah, they are, they are pretty extreme, but extremism is born out of um, oppression and um, persecution. So when you have a democratically elected um, group that is sitting there trying to um, govern its people, and the U.S. and Israel are giving weapons to the opposing party to attack them, and there were thousands that, that were uh, injured and hundreds that were killed in this process. I mean, you have to expect them to put up their guard and constantly be on the defense, because the country that they're in is one against them, and they're blockaded in now. It's, it's an open-air prison they're blockaded in. They've been blocked, uh, blockaded in for, for many years now. So the circumstances have to be considered before criticizing the, the government. Um, in any other circumstance, how can the government, how can the people be governed? How can the people be represented without a government that is that is extreme? If they weren't extreme, they would have been like the moderate um, federal officials that were very corrupt, and they would embezzle the money, they would take the money, and they would spend it on the people. So as if you look at it from strictly a perspective of a democracy, or strictly a, from a perspective of government officials that are representing their people. They are providing them as much education, they're providing them with the hospitals, providing them with, I mean, the means necessary to uh, best survive. Right. So, Noam, what do you think about that, that one question? How do you expect them to operate without an extreme government <clears throat> based on their situation? Um, wait, Mo, you don't, you don't agree with me that Hamas is a terrible organization? Sorry, can you repeat that? Do you agree that Hamas is a terror organization? No, I, I don't think they're a terrorist organization. Um, even, even, even the European Union and the United States declare them a organization? In the United States and Canada and the European Union, well, not all the European Union, uh, um, most of it, they also voted against a independent Palestinian state. And they also were the ones who funded FETA to stronghold and try to rig the election. And they were also the ones, the United States, the ones who fund the Israeli military, so it's for their best interest. So by creating an enemy is your your partner's enemy. I mean, you're pretty much using the media to manipulate their, their, uh, their reputation. And you're maintaining that stigma with them. So, I mean, if you define terrorism, by definition, Israel is, is terrorizing the Palestinians. But you don't see the U.S. saying that, you don't see Canada saying that, or the European Union saying that. But you see 138 other countries in the world, in the part of the U.N., that did vote for that. And if you watch the, the, uh, the speeches each one of the ambassadors gave, the majority of them did recognize Israel for um, having an apartheid state, uh, being uh, guilty of apartheid crime, and um, maintaining... Uh, settlements and illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank. So if you look at it, I mean, strictly from the facts, no opinion, it, Israel is violating 80 Security Council um, resolutions. So who is the, who's the bigger threat? Who, who is terrorizing the region? Who is terrorizing the people that are there? Palestinians aren't even, aren't even recognized as citizens. They're recognized as, as residents, as legal residents. Even Palestinian Israeli citizens now they don't have the same rights as Jewish Israeli citizens. You have to look at it from from the inside out now. 
Palestinians don't have equal rights. They um, don't have equal opportunities. So the, the Democratic government, Hamas, who is governing its, its people, is doing the best that it can. And I mean, pointing fingers and calling it a, a terrorist organization, that's ridiculous, considered that they are within the largest terrorist organization in the region. I mean, what is a greater threat to world security than a, um, a UN General Assembly security member that has violated 80 Security Council resolutions? Comparing it to Iran now, we say the U.S. says that Iran and uh, is the biggest threat to stability in the Middle East. Well, I mean, that's with Israeli influence they say that. How many UN resolutions, Security Council resolutions, has, has Iran violated? I'll just ask you a simple question. It, it, it's, to, it's, not a, it's not a simple answer, though. Yeah. No, I just, uh, I just, yeah, I just, I just asked you, I just asked, uh, I asked you if you recognize Hamas as a terror organization, yes or no? Dispute that the, that the rest of the world declare Hamas as a terror organization, and you just go to Israel apartheid, Israel is big threats, Israel is a terror, terror country. Okay. It's a more complicated, it's a more complicated issue than yes or no. It's not so complicated if you, your, your interest is to complicate things is only because you want to, to present things not as they are in real life. Okay? This is my opinion. Okay. So yeah, I'm not presenting you said, as you said, real life. The only reason you want to complicate it is to, to show the facts, the non-true facts about what happened. So if, you, if you're saying that... No, what did, what did Mo say that isn't true, in your opinion? What? What did Mo say that, in your opinion, what did Mo say that isn't tr that is not true? Uh, a lot of things. Beginning with this, that uh, Hamas is uh, not a terror organization, that Hamas is, uh, is taking, taking care of, uh, his, of his people, I don't know how to say it. But uh, Israel is a apartheid state, and Israel is a big threat, uh, threat to, to the world. Okay, uh, this is it's not true. Define terrorism because and de if, define apartheid crime. Okay, uh, for stuff. Uh, I think the, the definition of terrorism is, uh, is terror uh, civilian people, like the group that terrorized uh, civilian people. This is, I think, the exact. Uh, I, I, I see Hamas. Hamas, I think it's, it's by the way, it's a, it's a son of the Muslim Brotherhood you know, right? that cooperated with uh, the Nazis in the Second World, uh, the World War II. Okay? Are you it's aware of the Zionists in Israel? Are you aware of, of the extremists, uh, of the, the Zionists? Zionists are extremely anti Semitic. Zionists are extremely anti-Semitic. Why? Why, why, why is so? Zionism and and, uh, and Judaism are complete opposites in beliefs. Zionism believes in the establishment of a Jewish state. One, one of the principal, uh, one, one of the, the founding, um, uh, the foundation of, of Judaism is the, the the establishment of a Jewish state. Once the second Messiah comes at the Temple Mount, now. The second Messiah has not come yet, so it's against, it's in the Old Testament, it's in the Torah now, and there cannot be a Jewish state given to the Jewish people by God. It's been taken by force. So Zionism is 100% against against uh, Judaism. So tell okay, me where and, in the... And, 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 about, and, the Muslim, and the Muslim religion says that everybody is not a Muslim, should be killed, is a Kofel, should be killed. Have you read the Talmud? I, I, the Talmud is the most I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a religion. I'm not a religion in the world that says Jews should go out of their way to kill Gentiles, and the book gives examples of how to kill uh, Christians. And um, uh, Islam wasn't founded at the time the book was written, so it goes in ways to um, actually kill um, Christians. Have you read that book? It's I one of the most popular, that. famous Jewish scriptures, just as holy as the Torah. So, I mean, if you, want to, if you want to stick to historical biblical text, I mean, that that's one thing. And, I mean, I can I, talk to I you. Didn't, I didn't bring up the historical biblical text. And if you go historical, 
not biblical but historical, you will you will see the the fact is not uh, for your goods, for your own goods. But uh, but I didn't read the Talmud, and, and I'm not a religion man. My motive is not a religion motive. Uh, and uh, I don't know what you're talking about about the Talmud and stuff. But this extreme you can find in any religion. You can take the religion to extreme, and, uh, and uh, the responsibility of the majority is to, to to get out of the extremes. Okay. My, I, I, I Israeli society. I mean, the Israeli dangerous. society. The Israeli society, we are all the time getting out the extremists out of us. We don't want to be extreme for either side. Okay? We, 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 we want one. The thing is, this is not a level up. In the Palestinian, in the Palestinian uh, society, uh, the extreme is, is, a, is a, the control one, it's a, it's a majority. If you choose, if the people in Gaza Strip choose Hamas and Hamas, in the website, go to the Hamas website, you will see. They're blaming the Jews, they, the new, they are the new Hitler. They're blaming the Jews for, the, for uh, all, the, all the bad things that happened to the world in the 400 years, okay? And the main goal of Hamas is the destruction of Israel and the Jews inside, especially the Jews. Uh, and if, if the people over there chose Hamas, and you said it's not a terror organization, you live in the state, I don't know what to say to you. Really. Are you are you aware it's, of how like, Israel? It's like it's like the, the what? It's the, to say these things um, to listen to them superficially for someone who doesn't understand the background and how Israel was founded. That might that might sound plausible, but the fact is that Israel was founded um, not in 1948. The process began in the 1860s with the Zionist Party, where they sent um, militias out and started something called the Village Files and systematically went into each village and murdered and oppressed, pillaged, raped the villages, displaced 750,000 Palestinians. So, I mean, if, if you look at it from that, from that perspective, you have a population, an indigenous population, that has been stripped their land, stripped their rights. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're giving, you're giving you know, facts that are not true. You can't, you can't I'm expect sorry. now. You can't, you can't expect. I'm sorry, before, people, before the establishment of, of Israel, there, the, the problem was as the Jews, not, not the opposite. I'm sorry. So why, why should the Palestinians have to pay for the Nazi Holocaust? What? Ta- explain that to me. Well, so the Palestinians the have been living there for thousands of years, alongside with Jews, alongside with Bedouins, alongside no, I'm sorry, with I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, the Palestinian nation was, uh, was, uh, was uh, going out as a nation only 50 years ago. This is the youngest nation, nation I think, in the, in the world. It exists only 50 years, and it's established for the tool of destruction of Israel. That's it. That's it. Do you, do you know, uh, if, you go, if you go, if you go back in time, what? Do you understand that there is an indigenous population there that had generations and generations of families and farms that were hundreds of years old and a culture that was there? The culture was erased, they were murdered, they were raped, they were displaced, and they still cannot come back to their homeland. Grandparents and parents and generations have been there, and they don't have the right to return. Israel is supposedly a democracy, but they cannot come back to return to their homes. However, if Israel, you are a Jew, Israel, they were first of all, Israel is a Jewish point, state. Please, After point. she's a Jewish no, state, she's a democracy. If you are a Jew no, from anywhere in the world, regardless of what nationality you are, you can go and get citizenship yeah. in Israel. But a Palestinian yeah, yes, who had property there, who has family there, who was born yeah. there, does not have the right of return and cannot ever be a citizen. But we we didn't we didn't we didn't decide we didn't, we didn't decide of Israel to be our homeland. We are returned to our homeland after we, we return was given away from. Return what? When, when 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 were you there last? Two thousand years ago. Two thousand years ago. Are, are there, I mean, are there living people 2,000 years ago there? Let me tell you what, when Israel was founded, there are still people who, who are victims of being displaced, and they're still alive today. We didn't, we didn't rape anybody, we didn't, what, okay, okay, what happened? We're talking human rights now. Yeah, I think, I think we should, I think we should keep the, we should keep the conversation more relevant to now, as opposed to 
history. Yeah, I see something. Sure, Rat. You're, you're, you're really trying to justify it. A right of return well, 2,000 years ago. Mo, well, that's not... an indigenous population ethnically cleansed that want to come back now who are still living, still alive. Mo, right let's, now, let's give... they can go back to their home. Let's give Raphael a chance to, to say something. I wanted to uh, comment on some uh, statements made by Mo. Uh, the state of Israel was officially uh, recognized in 1917 after the, uh, the World War II through the League of Nations. Um, Hamas is a, a terrorist state uh, or a terrorist organization uh, in that it supports terrorist acts within Israel and fires missiles into Israel. If that were to stop, and if Hamas were to recognize Israel and not continuously call for its destruction, it would be peace. Israel wouldn't attack. I wish it was that easy. But, but it's not, and I mean, maybe on the surface that's what it seems like, and I, I, re I respect your, your opinion. You're, you're, you're calling, uh, if, you, if you're going to call Hamas a terrorist organization, you might as well call Israel its, its father. Israel is the largest terrorist organization. They are terrorizing a uh, population that is locked in an open-air prison. And you're saying maybe if they didn't shoot rockets out, maybe if Israel didn't keep them locked in and keep them living under apartheid conditions. They can't There's leave, they Israel can't go, they have over 500 checkpoints to go through every day from city to city. They don't have jobs, unemployment's high. They're constantly humiliated and brutalized. They don't have anything um, in their possession. They can't They can't build. Every, anything they build, it, they need special permits for it. The, the buildings are destroyed. I'm using the Palestinians as living in Syria. Syria. You know, at this point, you have to look at it from equality. You see How that Israel is, is, not a, is a terrorist state. It is not the same as what Hamas is doing. Israel is not calling for the destruction of the Palestinians during the oh, Oslo. Oh, really, really. They're not calling for the destruction of it. When every single prime minister of Israel has already said that they want to wipe the Palestinians off of the land, and they're constantly taking more land and displacing them. What they're you're saying is they're not shooting rockets into Palestine indiscriminately at civilian populations unless they are attacked. And then if they one out of seven Hamas million densely populated area, it's one of the most densely uh, populated areas in the world, they and it is an entire civilian population. That's why they're using a hospital or school or a media building, you're attacking a civilian population. That, that's a fact. is putting the, rate, the rocket launchers directly in those areas, and there Israel is using guidance, GPS guidance missiles to strike at those targets, not at the civilians. Civilians are always the target in any action, any war. In World War II, Dresden was bombed by the Allies, and it was, it was out, outrageous at that time. Civilians are, are casualties because of the politicians in charge. Right now, Palestinians have Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and I just heard that Iran is visit Ahmadinejad is visiting Egypt. So I don't know uh, if I have anything else to contribute, but I can say that Israel does not discriminately attack. Gaza. It only attacks when a missile is launched. I mean, 
I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, but the 2008-2009 fact-finding mission has shown hundreds of cases of Israel intentionally targeting civilians, and that was the former um, South African apartheid uh, Supreme Court justice who, who led this mission. So what I can say to you is that hundreds of cases that have already been filed, so I mean, it's your word over an entire committee's case from the United Nations. And also, I want to ask you a question. Now... If, let's say, in the United States, in uh, the most densely populated city, let's say we're in New York City now, you have a terrorist organization that is hiding in a very very heavy, uh, densely populated neighborhood, and they're shooting out rockets into, into different states. Do you really think that the U.S. is going to send the Air Force and shoot F-16 missiles into crowded um, neighborhoods, regardless of where the missiles are coming from? Either way, you're killing your own people. Now, can if I they really wanted question? to go in and, and, they they that have and indiscriminately attack, they would they go in on foot question? and they would remove these things. The fact is, the, the siege started when missiles were shot at soccer fields. Hamas has never broken a ceasefire. Israel has broken every ceasefire. Mo, let, that, let, that's a fact. Let, let Raphael answer your question. Please let me answer the question. New York is an extreme example but okay you gave it in the case where attacks occur in New York the police homeland security will crack down I doubt missiles will be fired but tear gas will be used but I can only tell you that if you take the range of rockets that are fired from Gaza and compare that to the United States, you would reach Texas, Arizona, and I guarantee you if rockets were to fall from Mexico, they would be attacked. If Canada were to shoot rockets into America, they would be attacked. But the difference is you're comparing different countries. We're comparing a population well, living within... Are comparing Palestine to Israel? That's a different con two different countries. But do you expect the Palestinians to be attacked, ceasefires are broken, and then to sit there and have uh, children die and have innocent murder? I, I sympathize with you on that. By Israel, Israel, and it's been broken around election time for the last... Ceasefires are broken on both sides but mostly by the Palestinians. I continually... How can you say about the Palestinians? Give me your evidence. By the rocket attacks, by the uh, terrorists... The rocket attacks. The rocket attacks. Yeah. If run, Hamas has run, control run. over Gaza, they have control over the launching of the missiles. Okay, let's talk Pillar of Cloud. It's the most recent event that happened in Gaza. How was the ceasefire broken? I don't know Pillar of Cloud. I don't know the name. I mean, thousands of rockets. Pardon? What's up? Thousands of rockets. This is how it's going to work. Okay, and well, actually, when you have one million citizens under fire, the job yes. of our government is to defend. You, the citizen. And I, and I agree, they have the right to defend themselves completely, yeah, I guess. And, and in Hamas, it's the opposite. They are using their population, civilian population, as a human shield. And, and this is what was proved again and again. Don't, don't, don't bring the UN stuff, okay? Because the UN is irrelevant organization. The UN, the UN is deciding, is deciding, is deciding, General okay. assembly. Well, you know, you know, Guys, we have to, we have to speak again, one at a time. So not make it true, okay? It's, it's impossible to know. Everything, uh, every time you start to speak, you go for the same broken record of Israel apartheid, Israel dangerous, Israel terror, okay? How can you support... It doesn't, it doesn't matter how many times you repeat the lie, you repeat the lie, it will not be true, I'm sorry. So you, you're saying it's if you want, for one if you want, if you want, if you want, if you want to discuss, if you want to discuss, but not with other brutality. I'm against all all types of murder. I'm against all types of violence. I'm not supporting any type of violence here. Let's get that straight, okay? No, I'm not, you, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying, but what I am saying is, when a ceasefire is broken and missiles go into a densely populated area, it is their government's job to protect them. 
I can tell you right now, no country in the world will sit there, no state will sit there and be attacked and not have any type of uh, retaliatory action. And that's a fact. And the facts are there. Ahmed Jabari was, was killed. After he proctored... Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed Jabari is a big terrorist that is responsible for the death of lots of Israelis. This is why we ended his life. That's it. This is the point. You, you, are, you, are saying, you are saying lots of beautiful things. I am, I am against murder, uh, I am against this, I am an activist in human rights and everything. But if you not recognize it, is it Hamas, is it a terror organization? You, you, it's, it's, it's going nothing. If, if, if you are going to call Hamas... I can, I, can say, I can say a lot of beautiful sentences now. I can say a lot of beautiful sentences. I, I, I know, I know to Chris... By definition, me, me, I, I think you. We're going to call Hamas a terrorist organization. Israel is a terrorist state. If if if, if you if you go ahead and say that, I disagree. Why? I really disagree. By definition, I, I understand you disagree, but I'm saying it's by definition. You can't what be a hypocrite is, when it comes to the situation. Why? Israel why? Is, why that the, the country like, is defending its right? citizen? You calling her? Uh, Terror, uh, terror state. If a, if a country defending their uh, citizen, why? We didn't attack Hamas first. We we withdraw from Gaza. We withdraw from Gaza. Hamas. Really critical argument. It's it's like it's like saying Al Qaeda is not a terror organization. It's like saying the American builds the twin twin uh, buildings uh, too high for the peace uh, fly of Al Qaeda. It's the same thing. That's Irrelevant. I don't know where that fits in at all. To be honest with you, I they have they have the same they have the same mottos. The motto of Hamas: "We like death as the Jew like life." I, I can I, just go to Hamas website. Don't don't be. Are you, don't I mean, make a joke of yourself. You were born and raised in Israel, correct? Yes. In, in the Israeli curriculum in schools, you, you are taught that Palestinians are snakes and Palestinians are lesser than, than Israelis, and you're taught to fear them. There are actually signs going to the West Bank, going into Gaza that say, that say no, Palestinian just, village is ahead. Um, Mo, Mo, let's just, I know, you know what, I'm sorry, Alex, Alex, Alex I'm sorry, it's, it's being like, you're I've been to talking to sorry. What did you say, I mean, Noam? The fact is, you don't. Uh, I, you're talking about size. But I, I mean, you don't want to hear the truth. I'm not giving an opinion at this point. I'm just telling you what the facts are. Well, well, Mo, let. let uh, but it's, it's incorrect. You cannot decide the facts if it's incorrect. Let, wait, 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 ever wait. Fact. So let Noam explain what he's taught. If you think he's taught in school that Palestinians are snakes, and Noam's saying that's not the case, let Noam explain how he's taught in in school. If because then it's not a fact if Noam is going to explain his. Personal experience. Okay. So, Noam, what's your well, all, yeah? What's your what's your rebuttal to that statement? Oh, I I've, I've talked to many um, Israelis that are living in the U.S. now, and they I talked to them about their experience um, going through the education system in Israel. Um, Miko Pilad, if you read his book, he's actually the son of Mati Pilad, who was. Um, uh, one of the most important ta tactical generals that the Israeli um, Defense Force has ever had. And he discusses his um, childhood in Israel growing up, being taught to um, look down on Palestinians, that they're animals, that they're dirty, that they're this, that they're that, and to never even come into contact with a Palestinian to create the divide. And I mean, if, if you're, I mean, and I've heard this from many other people too. And it's, it's just. Well, the let way me get, I want to hear, I want to hear, I want to hear. I want to hear Noam's opinion to that. I want to hear Noam's opinion to that because Noam's living in Israel and he's been he's grown up there his whole life. So, Noam, is that how you're taught to think about Palestinians? Absolutely not. Uh, the thing in Israel, the education system. Uh, I think, as long as I remember myself, at home and in school, they always teach us to. To want peace. That the main goal of I think of every every Israeli is peace. Even even we have we have extremists. They are not the majority, and they are not controlling us. But the, really, wherever you go, we, we have song about peace. We are willing to, to do peace. You can see it along the history. 
I never taught in school that uh, Palestinians are dirty or pigs or stuff like this. This is sound like the Palestinian education system that educate who is not a Muslim. The Jews and the Christians are come from the monkeys and the, and the pigs. And, and, and they are not only teaching this in Palestinian school, they are teaching this in every Muslim school in the world, I think, even in the UK and even in the yeah, US. Every Muslim school in the world, and, and you know this how? You found every Muslim school in the world. You and sat you down. know, and how do you know, know that we are teaching I this? this? I know what, what I'm yeah. saying. I'm not just saying this. I talked to several yeah. Israelis that, that I, I communicate with and have open dialogue with, just like this. And I've even been told, and that that's where they step forward and say, "Hey, I I never knew that I could sit here and talk with a Palestinian openly as I do today, because going through my primary education, I was always told that this is they were one way, and this is how they were." And it's, yes, I'm not saying... You know, we have here uh, Mahmoud, I think uh, I speak with Mahmoud, he is a Palestinian from Jordan. Ask him what, he, what uh, they teach him in school when he was little. He said, he said he always afraid that the uh, Israeli soldier is coming from under his bed. And you know, you know what I'm talking about. He agree with me about the, this, the I education agree, system. I agree that, I mean, every, that every so education system... I can, I can tell you, I can give you, I can tell you for sure, this is not true what you said. As an Israeli that raised, grew up and raised in Israel, this is not true. Uh, today, uh, today, as uh, the president of Israel uh, let uh, chose a party by uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to assemble the, the parliament, and uh, on, on his uh, on his speaks when uh, in television, the first thing he said uh, to Mahmoud Abbas. President of uh, Fatah is let's talk because every day we are not talk it's more day that we are delaying the peace. Okay. So do you really I think that I, he has good faith intentions in talking when Mahmoud Abbas absolutely, has been a puppet for the Israeli government for years and that's been proven? Can you tell me what happened at the last um, attempt of peace talks? How come no, there haven't been any, uh, there hasn't been any type of resolution? Whenever there is a peace talk, they don't follow through. How can there be good faith peace talks when after Palestine has been put in as the 194th UN state, Israel announced they're going to start building settlements, expanding settlements in the to be ca Palestinian capital and throughout the West Bank? How is that good faith? How I mean, you can say one thing and do another. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mo. I'm sorry, Mo. Jerusalem, Jerusalem is not the Palestinian capital. Jerusalem is the capital can of Israel. Can we give Raphael a chance to speak? And we will, and we can, and we can build in our capital whatever we want. You understand? It's against international law, guys. No, can, um, no, it's against, no, uh, it's against the no, Geneva Convention. Can we give Can we give Raphael a chance to, to speak? Please, um, I don't. I want to uh, address the education issue because you're moving away from that. So I wanted to mention that. Um, I've been in Israel. I have many relatives in Israel. I know the school system not by experience, but by experiencing their behavior. And I also know that in Israel, you can get television from Jordan, from Saudi Arabia, from Gaza, and they espouse hatred. They teach young children hatred to kill Jews, to kill Israelis. That is the education system. You, Moa, may have so talked to purpose? people. You may have talked to people, may have read books. I can tell you there are books by extremist Jews, extremist Israelis, but the facts are that in Israel, education is not just um, to be good, it's a moral. It's, it, it encompasses the morals, teachings of the, of the Torah. And we are taught, uh, Jews in Israel and Arabs in Is everyone still there?
Mo, can you hear me? Yeah. Did did Noam and Raphael freeze or? Israel no, taught. Oh, that sorry. They were, that they were equal. I'm finished. No, go ahead. Okay. I just on okay on my screen. Everyone uh, was frozen, but continue. As, uh, no, as, I, I, as, I, 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 I'm finished with the thought. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm finished with the thought that I said. I basically that the education system. Uh, I don't know it. Uh, being in class, I picked up uh, cousins there. Um, I know I have attended uh, some uh, kindergarten, and I've seen any uh, uh, sign of hatred. Uh, what about anything, third graders? I've seen, I've I've seen sign missiles that are going to be shot seen, into, into Gaza. And the teaching of love, the teaching of being kind to everyone, to, to have, have to give to charity. So my point is that not being an Israeli in Israel, but having visited there and having seen television from the neighboring countries where they teach hatred, where they teach how to, to, to destroy Israel. They teach four-year-olds in camps with machine guns and, and uh, army fatigues. I don't understand the reasoning. Kids should enjoy life. I mean, I, I agree with I. I I do know that there is there there is there is definitely um, biased media for sure. There's biased media everywhere, and there's extreme media everywhere. And I am aware that Hamas ha does put out those extreme shows for kids, and I'm a completely I'm uh, very very against that. To, and let's just make that clear now. Um, as far as um, teaching equality, um, teaching equality, how can you teach equality when you don't lead by example? Palestinians are completely separate. There is there's an apartheid wall that's taking up Palestinian land. Um, the Gazans can't leave Gaza. The West Bank is, is occupied. Land. How can you Palestinians what would happen according to Israeli legislation if an Israeli married someone from the West Bank or Gaza? Difficult. It would be difficult. Oh, I agree with illegal. you. It's actually illegal. Can, can, uh, no, can you can you verify? This for me? I think. I mean, of course, it would be difficult. It would be difficult uh, in, in the 1960s for American white to marry a black. And that is completely wrong. And you're right. I'm experiencing a little lag on my end. I don't know how your guys' cameras are. I understand what you're saying with the, with, uh, the connection with the right of return. And the example was... In I can, I would say, can I ask you a question, Norm? Um, let's say, let's say that there was peace. Let's say there was a true peace. You think that in, 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 in the future that laws will change like that? You have nothing against Arabs or Muslims. You have nothing against them. The fact is the yeah. laws have actually gotten more um, separate. It's, it's...
actually read his book. It's called Son of the Moss. Yeah. And speeches. And, I mean, that that's one person that's saying that. And I do understand that the organization may have been founded on some type of extremism. But, like I said, out of repression comes extremism. So, the Black so if, Panther if, the son, if the son of the leader of Hamas saying Hamas, it's a very dark and terrible organization. About that it. human and, and uh, you are a human rights acti activist can say it. But how can you? I agree that, that it's been that of extremism, and I, I don't agree with their practices and against violence. But what I am saying is, what about the thousands of Israeli soldiers who refused to serve in the army, and they've come out and said, "Hey, when I did serve, this is what I saw, and I no longer will serve in the IDF because this is what we do." And they're pretty, they've revealed hundred cases of human rights violations and tormenting and shame and murder and and just destruction um, for no reason. And it's not self defense. It's going into it's self. The villages and this is an organization. It's called Breaking Silence. The they're they're all Israelis. They're Israelis that have served an idea. You know, and there's over a thousand. First of them. All, yeah. Oh, you know, you know why why it is possible here for those people to to say what they want because 